Hi, welcome to the channel. I'm Martin Bell. In this video, I'm going to cover how you can handle larger than RAM datasets with folders. So I'll start by importing some libraries. So here are the instructions to download the data we'll be using. Just to give you an idea, these are 100 parquet files that in total they take about 8 gigabytes of space. But as the parquet files are compressed, um, in this case, the, if we would have used CSV file format, this would be almost 80 gigabytes of data. So these are some of the files examples. The first step is to define a path uh, where the data is. So here I'm using the pathlib library, and that actually makes it simpler to work with the data. And it works in Windows and Linux. So uh, your code will run no matter which OS you work. So here I'm just defining the path for one of these files. I just want to try one idea with a small sample of data. So I can read one of these files first. Here I use pl.readparquet, just passing the file path. And I can, uh, yeah, I already read it. So this has 23 million rows. Um, seven columns. Uh, let's take a look at the first uh, rows. So we have some information related to taxi uh, rides. So each observation is a taxi drive. Okay, so just to test the, the space of the CSV, I saved it, but you don't need to do it. The first step would be to compute an aggregation on this sample uh, data frame that we just read. So here, what I'm doing, I'm basically extracting the date column then I'm grouping by, by the pickup date time and the dispatching base number. That's probably some sort of location ID. And I'm computing the count and then sorting by these two variables. So similarly to pandas, you can use this method chaining uh, approach. And I think that makes the code very readable. So this takes around 74.8 uh, milliseconds. So, I mean, just remember that we're working with just one file of these 100 files. And, but still, this is very fast if you just do it on one. So now that we, let's say that this is the kind of calculation we want to do with all the data. Okay, so how would we do this? The approach would be relatively similar. So we only change this part that's just reading the files, all the files. And here, what we would create is some sort of query plan. So let me run this. So, so far, nothing got executed. This is all um, lazy evaluation. So what, what's happening here is that Polars is figuring out the best way to read this data. And I mean, basically, it's doing the same thing over and over for all of the files. So all we need to do is just uncomment this collect. Uh, option. So I'm just going to run it. So I ran a benchmark for this before it took 32.6 seconds. So remember, we're reading uh, around 80 gigabytes of data. And I mean, I only have uh, 64 gigabytes of RAM. So or this is already larger than the RAM that I have. And the only thing that changed here is this part that I replaced. I had DF sample here. I just replace it with the reading this parquet folder. And I, I added this collect uh, statement that has the argument streaming equals true. So when we um, define it as streaming equals true, um, what happens is that um, it, it doesn't read all the data in RAM. So we can do this sort of calculation out of RAM. And, and that's it. It's, it's finished. This is how the top rows look. And I can do a shape also. So we can see that this is still a relatively large data set, even though it's an aggregation, 1.5 million. And if we wanted to make some plots, we, we just do two pandas and just we're just using pandas. So when we after we aggregated the data, uh, with Polars, we have a, a relatively small data set and we can just use pandas for 
data visualization or, or all the typical data analysis we would do. And yeah, that's it for today. The, the idea was to show you how you can work with larger than RAM data in Polars. I think it's, it's very easy to do. And I also wanted to show you how I would kind of work more interactively with a, with a sample of the data. And then I would use this lazy mode. So another thing you can do if you want to work with a smaller data set, you can grab this, uh, read, the, read the data with Percare and save a sample of the data that you can load in RAM. And then you can use all the typical tools that you're used to working with. Um, I think samples are a very powerful idea, believe it or not, and are generally not used. So let's say if you would take a sample of 10% of the data, um, that would be enough to do whatever type of analysis that you were planning to do. So yeah, that's another way to approach when you have very large data sets. Okay, yeah, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know in the comments and what you think about it. Uh, please subscribe and like the video. Okay, thank you very much.